Hello YouTubers, this is a uh, another session where we get to talk about securing uh, web applications using Azure Active Directory. Uh, in the last session we did kind of a quick and dirty you know thing where we built a Blazor application and, a, and an API and we kind of hooked them up to each other. We let kind of Visual Studio Tools with Active Directory kind of do all the magic to generate the secrets and all that kind of stuff. And then it seems like a lot of people really liked that video and, you know, they reached out to me and said, well, you know, you have the, you know, a user signed in talking to an API, but how do we do something just as simple to kind of have a an API call an API or a process call an API? So this is what we call kind of an offline process. There is no user context in this operation. It's mostly a client that's trying to hit an API and the API is basically kind of processing you know the request and making sure that you know this is this client is authenticated to access certain endpoints and then it gives back the answers so here's what we're gonna do today let me just give you a high level you know of what we're trying to do as usual here's dry -O. so here's what I want to do this is an API just a simple API really really dummy API that we're gonna build together and the API does stuff whatever these stuff are and then we're going to basically build a client and this client is going to try to uh, basically hit that API and get, you know, information without having a user in that context. That's just really all that it is. The reason why this model is super important is because if you're building a distributed uh, services, distributed system microservices architecture, you're going to need that a lot. You're going to need the ability to be able to go and say, you know, I need a whole bunch of services working behind the scene. They're just getting a message on a queue and they're authorizing, authenticating and hitting, you know, different endpoints or, you know, leaving messages on the queue or whatever the case may be, right? This piece here is super important because when you are building something enterprise level, you're going to end up with some 120 microservices, right? A, a simple example of this is the Netflix architecture, you know, the they went out there some years ago and they basically you know showed the world how they're distributing their services and microservices and there's just a tons of these and you're gonna need that you know so much I have to tell you though there is a an approach in our industry where people are saying you know within microservices uh, they're all non-authenticated, non-secured, but they're living within a virtual network. And then the gatekeeper is the only one that has uh, authorization, authentication on it. And it's basically communicating directly with these services. People came up with that idea to kind of simplify the process and uh, control the latency and the time it takes to communicate a quest from one service to another. Because authentication, authorization takes time, especially if you're under like a heavy fire and you have millions of requests coming in and out. There will be a lot of blips right anyway let's just go back to this you know model because you're gonna need this a lot what we're gonna do is that we're gonna build two apps right uh, just like we did with 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 the blazer component uh, one app that is a client and the other app is the API so this is the API app and this will be the client app right let's start first let's go ahead and build something like that and see how far that will take us and then, you know, we'll start building a client and I'm going to show you some really cool things about, you know, being able to use Postman to kind of do uh, stuff like that. So, okay, let's first go to portal.azure.com. Let me find the right account here. Here's my live account. There we go. And then I'm going to go to app registrations. Right. And I'm going to kind of register a new app. This is an organizational app. You know, super straightforward. I'm going to call it ABC uh, uh, app like that. Okay, so I'm registering this guy. So I have this APC app. That's great. I'm going to add in a in the permissions area. You can also add it from the top. Uh, sorry, in the expose API, you can click that sit button, that little sit link in here. Or the exact same thing you can do is basically add an application ID URL. It'll do exactly the same thing. It'll take you over here and then set and then save and you're done. We're going to need that later. That's the resource ID. That's something that we really super need to be able to kind of, you know, do the, the right stuff to, uh, to communicate, to, to tell a client, this is the resource that you need to talk to in terms of authorization authentication. Okay. So we have this in here. That's great. Now I want to go and say, 
I need to add a role. So I'm going to go into app role, create an app role, and I'm going to go and say uh, read all students. Right? Or right, students read all. Right? And I'm going to make it for a, a both users and applications. And I'm just going to take this and put it in here. And this again in here. Do you want to enable this app role? Absolutely. So here's the students dot read dot all okay so this is our pattern so that takes care of doing this part this part here is completed right now let's go and set up this part right let's put that guy in progress in here and let's go create an ABC APC app API so let's go up in here here we go create new project uh, I need a simple ASP.NET Core API, EPC uh, Core API, right? There is that, and let's give this guy its own repo. Visual Studio is starting to do this really weird uh, thing where my all my projects are being created under the same directory of a previous project, which I don't understand why, but here we are. So you see in here, I'm not going to add anything this time, right? We're going to write some code, but not a lot of code, right? And and in here, I'm just going to go ahead and just create that API and create a simple endpoint, super quick endpoint on the fly just to do uh, the purpose. So here we go. Here it is. And uh, let's create a quick model. So it's models. Under models, I'm going to create student, student model, like this. Let me actually increase the screen size just for the people on their phones. Here we go. Uh, display settings. And then I'm going to go 150%. I hope that's kind of close enough. There we go. And then in the student model, I'm just going to create, I don't know, just a random ID. And here's a name, string, name, like this. Okay. Right? If you're getting this weird squiggly thing, right, that basically is some added in feature that I don't really fancy too much. You'll see some nullable and impl implicit usings. Go ahead and do disable for both of these because, you know, they're actually a bad pattern and there's there's some magic there that you don't need to know right you know they they basically go and say you know oh there's a GUID but where's the using system oh, with some in some other file right if I want to play like that I'll just go right in JavaScript I think that I think that pattern is whack I don't like it so anyway here's the controllers throwing this away throwing that away you're gonna find some missing references of course because of the implicit usings so we're gonna get rid of all of that and then we're gonna get, add in all the good stuff in here so this is me bringing in these references because of that new pattern it basically says oh there's some magical implicit using somewhere and I'm like no way I don't want to deal with that right I just want to see what I need because when you go take a, a code snippet out of this you need to be able to take the entire file and just give it to someone else and they know that these are the dependencies that they need from an engineering experience perspective it really sucks I don't like it Okay, so okay, let's just go ahead here and do this. So I have the API. I'm gonna create a controller in here. Here's an API controller. How fast would it be for someone who's been doing this for some 20 years to get this up and running? Let's see. So it's a student's controller. Okay, and I need a HTTP get method and then public action result of a list of students. There's no async or anything, and this is get all students. And this guy is going to return a new list of students. Here you go. I see a lot of people do this when they're building new models. They do this. That's some old school C sharp. We don't do that anymore, right? It's much cooler this way, right? It works, but you know, stop doing that. It's really not necessary. Uh, here we go. So this is a student. So yeah, I'm gonna return three three students because three is is an odd number. I like odd numbers. So here's a GUID, new GUID in here, and then I'm gonna go and say name uh, Hassan Habib, and then I'm gonna go here and say here's another one, 
Andrew McFarland like this and then maybe I'm gonna put another one in here and say this is uh, Michael Michael Mendelssohn like this okay so there's a bunch of names in here right and I want to make sure that the API actually works right so I'm just gonna go run this API so we have an API that's running it's giving us some data great here we go a little quick swagger document all right and yeah this is my Azure portal and okay so we have this all in place now let's um, let's see here let's go and hit that endpoint all right the endpoint is working and you're getting data great no magic there super simple right now here comes the fun part right I'm gonna go into my project program CS and I'm gonna go here and say builder services dot add uh, Microsoft what was it give me a second here let me let me get the uh, the exact wording and you're not you're not really you know expected to memorize this off the top of your head because it's not high school anymore but let me get the exact wording here so we just give you the right information here we go yeah add Microsoft identity there you go add Microsoft identity web API authentication right so this is uh, this is a package that basically lives in let's see is it Microsoft management let's do this manage uh, we need Microsoft identity web that's right Microsoft identity web there you go here's this guy I'm gonna install it this package by the way doesn't really get updated too much like it doesn't really get a lot of it's a very critical package it does a lot of security for a lot of enterprise applications and um, yeah there it is add add Microsoft identity web API authentication and inside this guy you're gonna do the configuration uh, forgive that I'm using the program not the startup CS but in startup CS you would just say services dot right so it's the same thing this is just because of the template and I created it in in in, in C sharp dot uh, net 6 so it's kind of it, it give me that template the other thing I want to do here is that I want to go and say at use uh, authentication so you did authorization now we're using authentication what else is left ah so now we need to go into our controller right and on our controller on this HTTP get I'm gonna go here and say authorize with a role and this role is exactly the same role that we created when we copied the, the, the student dot read all that we created on the app all right so on the student read all we created this role that's exactly the same role that we need to do in here but wait there is more if you did this program CS and added Microsoft identity and you're looking for configurations then you need to add this configuration in here somehow right so what are these configurations that you need to do to kind of get off there well first of all we need to go and say Azure AD right we have an instance we need a client ID I think we need a tenant ID in here I think that's pretty much it right so you need to kind of add uh, the instance client ID and tenant ID the instance is your HTTPS login Microsoft online.com and then the tenant ID and the client ID you get from this Azure uh, portal you know the basically the application that we built together so if I let me zoom out a little if you go to the overview this is on the API here's your client ID I'm gonna put it in here and here's also your let's see where is my life uh, right here and here's the tenant ID right here right so now we set up this app to be secure based on this uh, app registration Azure Active Directory 
right? What this guy is going to go do, it's going to go do the magic. Look at the configuration and look exactly for Azure AD with these particular uh, details. If you really want to be finicky about it and you're going to change things and all that, it's looking for Azure AD specifically, but I'm assuming you can go and say config section name and you go and say my super awesome section name if you want to do it you know something else like you know change the you know the section that you're working with okay okay now that we got this out of the way let's verify first that our API is actually working let's see is it actually preventing us from consuming that endpoint there we go what am I missing expected either invalid JSON reader uh, what am I missing? It's probably the app settings. Oh, yeah. We need a comma in here. Okay, there you go. Comma. Yep. Here we go. All right, so now if I go hit that exact same endpoint, it's, it's, it's going to tell me, you know, no go now. No go because we are secure now. You can't actually access it, right? This is a really simple example. Like, this doesn't have downstream APIs. It doesn't have all that craziness, you know, that we need to do in, in a larger enterprise. Like, if you want the token to actually go through, it's a different story. Okay, so now this is secure, which means that this part here is done. This piece here is completed. Okay, let's go create this client app. So we are now in stage three of this quick demonstration, right? Let's go to Azure portal. And in the app registrations, I'm going to create, what did we call our app? We called it uh, ABC, something like that. Let's see. Yeah, ABC app. Great. Let's create ABC client. Right. So this is the app client. And we registered it. Okay. And now we want to add a permission. So I want this client in here to be able to go and hit the API endpoint but we can't do it unless we give permission to this guy to actually consume that endpoint so how are we gonna do that I'm gonna go here into API permissions and I'm gonna add the new permission and I'm gonna go to my API's I'm gonna find the ABC app and find that students read all and then I'm gonna click add permissions now if I say grant admin consent now I'm consenting this guy to talk to this guy. So basically this, this guy here has a consent for students.read.all. So now this guy is consent is consented or, or, or approved to actually communicate based on that one role. So you could have multiple roles on multiple endpoints. But for, for this particular app, it'll just be this one guy. So that means that this guy here is completed as well. Okay, now let's talk about the client. I'm going to use Postman. You know, I know every software engineer out there will be like, can I just do use, use Postman to just try things out, right? Which is great. But before I use Postman, I need a secret. Let's find Postman here real quick. Here we go. It's Postman. Let's create a new endpoint. And watch this. In Postman, I'm going to use xww-form uh, URL encoded. And I'm going to add a bunch of things in here. Right? So what are these things? I need to add a resource. Right? This resource is basically the target. That's basically this guy in here. This little ID that we generated or originally, like if you go back to app registrations and go to ABC app, do you remember when I told you, hey, generate that because you're going to need it? That's exactly what we're going to do here. I'm going to go here and say, give me this resource in here, right? And then I need a client ID. This client ID belongs to what? Belongs to this guy, the client app right so this is me I'm gonna go and generate a token so I can hit the endpoint right so look at uh, uh, for client ID here it is client ID right here right and then what else do I need I need a tenant ID I think so this is tenant ID let's go back and get the tenant ID in here oh wait 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 I'm, I'm getting this from the wrong app I need to get this from uh, the client app 
yeah, yeah, so here's a client ID. The tenant ID is going to be the same, usually. Here you go, so this is a client ID. And then I need a tenant ID. Right, and I also need a client secret. I don't know if I, I don't know if I call it client, yeah, I think it's, let's see, client, yeah, client secret. Yeah, client ID, resource, and then there's also grant type, which is client credentials. I don't think we need the tenant ID though, okay. So that's it's just a grant type. Client uh, credentials, client credentials. Like this, and then we need, uh, let's see, uh, this is that. And then I need the client secret, right? So it's client. Here you go, client secret. This endpoint that I'm going to be hitting, I'm going to show you where you can get it from. And I'm going to show you where you can get the secret from. So remember, this is the client, right? I need to go in, into these secrets and create a new secret. Doesn't matter what the name is. And then I'm going to copy that secret. And then I'm going to go back here into my Postman. And I'm going to throw the secret in here right doesn't matter because it's a demo app you can do that right now where do we get that URL that we're gonna hit the endpoint from with if you go into your uh, endpoints in your client there is a thing here called OAuth 2 token do you see that so I clicked here on the endpoint and it basically showed me that endpoint in here right so click endpoints and you copy that that's how you're gonna go generate that token like this let's try it I might have missed something we'll see there you go. So see, it went and generated a token for me. Now I can use that token to go hit that other API. Now I can easily go and say, oh, well, the, the API that's refusing to uh, serve my request because, here it is, the API that's refusing to serve my request because I don't have uh, the right permissions and all that, it, now I have an actual API for it or an actual uh, token for it to kind of communicate and, and send the request over. So I'm going to go back here. Here's the endpoint slash API slash students. We're going to try it first without the token. Here you go, 401 authorized. And then in the headers, I'm going to say uh, authorization. Authorization. And then I'm going to go here and say bearer. And then I'm going to, you know, kind of, oh, no, not that one. Uh, where did I, where did we put it? There it is. Copy. Here you go. Bearer. Just like that. Now if I hit that endpoint, let's see what happened. Authorization, bearer. Oh, do we have, uh, did I copy too much? Let's see. Yeah, we have uh, double quotes in here and some crazy. There you go. Let's hit that. There you go. So now we're authorized. See how I did that? Right, so what did we do? We went and generated a token, right? And this is, it has a client secret, grant type, client ID, and resource, right? And now based on that token, it's a bearer token, so I basically went and basically called that API endpoint, and that's that, right? Now, this is great for you testing things. So now let me, let me go back to the map here and say, okay, we figured out how to make this guy talk to this guy based on this. So this guy is referencing this and this guy is referencing this, right? I want to show you how to build a simple console application. You know, I'm pretty sure you can make these requests on your own. You could literally just go and say, okay, I figured it out, right? But there are tools that can make these things simpler for you, right? Um, uh, what are these tools? You can, you can basically, uh, let's see here. So let me, let me go back here. And let me kind of let's build a really quick and dirty kind of console application, and this console application will basically help us kind of generate that token for us. And I'm gonna gonna we're gonna try this token together, right? Of course, like if you're familiar with the work that I usually do, you'll know that um, uh, you don't need a a you, you don't need to build your own HTTP client. There's RESTful Sense library which is gonna gonna help you do something like that. So you won't really need uh, that much kind of work but let's just go back and create a new project in here 
And this project is just going to generate tokens for us. We're not going to do much with it. There you go, console app. There you go. Everything everything is so large. And this is abc dot uh, client. Right? So this is a completely new project. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, there you go. Okay. So what do I need here? I need a bunch of things, right? I'm going to store some of these values that we have. So it's public a class program. And I want to basically go and say, I want to get a token. That's all I want to do. So static. Uh, string token just give me the token right I'm, I don't even care about uh, get token about returning it or doing anything fancy I'm just gonna write it this way I need an authentication context so where's this authentication context is coming from uh, let's do I think it's the identity model here so this is authentication context equals new authentication why well, I didn't pull is Azure Active Directory, find latest. Come on, come on, there you go. This authentication context will want two things from you. Watch this, it wants a client. Let's see, does it want, it want a client ID unless we pulled in the wrong one. Hang on a second, let's see if we can pull the right uh, dependencies for you here. So the one that we want is Microsoft Identity Model Clients dot Active Directory. Is that really the one that we have Microsoft Identity Model Clients Active Directory perfect okay I need to pass in here two things for this guy I need to pass in a an authority and the authority for this guy remember we talked about this I think I think last video uh, specifically we talked about this uh, the the authority is basically your uh, tenant ID put in front of uh, the login, Microsoft, online, whatever, whatever. So if you go back into uh, Postman in here, and if you go into this, do you see this login, Microsoft, whatever, all the way up to this guy, 68. Right, so I'm going to put this guy in here. That's my authority. I'm going to go ahead and say authority. Like this. That's my authority here. Okay. What else do I need? I need something called client credentials. So here's client credentials equal new client credentials. And this guy is going to need a client ID. That's the one that's going to need a client ID and a client secret. The exact same thing that we used here in Postman. Here is the client ID. Right? And here is a client secret. this client secret like this and the client secret is the one that we generated which is this guy okay now I got the client ID and the client secret now what do I need to do I need to go and actually generate that token right and and in order for you to generate that token we're gonna go like this and say give me here you go. Give me this context, the authentication context. Dot acquire token. Acquire token async, right? And then we need a resource ID in here. Do you remember the resource ID? That's the ID that we passed into this this area here. So this is the resource ID. And we also need the we need somehow to pass the credentials, right? So it's client credentials. And then acquire token or get token. Uh, I probably need to make this async though. Uh, task, value task. All right, so this here is going to give me the token. So here's string token equal await. Here's your token right here. Now let's see why is this guy mad. It's mad because. Because this guy returns 
an uh, authentication result inside of a task. So this is authentication result. And then maybe in here we can basically print out authentication result dot access token right there. Okay, so that means I need to asynchronize this guy as well. Unfortunately, I don't think the main will play well with... Um, it's not going to play so well with... We should probably call this get token async. It's best practice. I don't know. You can actually... Like, if you if we use value task in here, would that work? I don't know. We're going to try it out together. Okay, so let me just put that breakpoint in here and run this guy. Ideally, this should give me a token that I can still use and go put it in uh, the uh, the API call. And in that API call, I'll be able to still kind of pull the information from that running API. Basically, that's that's the goal. That's the point, right? So let's see here. This is authentication results. Quick watch. Where is my token? Here it is. There you go. So this is access token. And then I'm going to go back to Postman in here. Here's the endpoint. I'm going to go and use that in here. So this is going to be my token. Paste, send. Is it working? Yes, it is. You know that it's working because if you change anything in that token, like instead of a C to a B or something like that, it's just going to fail. It's just going to say unauthorized. All right. Now let's do this together. Let's let's take away the permission from that client. So now that we did this guy, this guy is done here. Let's take away the permission. Let's put a just just to show you that this is actually working the way it's supposed to. I'm going to take away the permission, right? So I'm going to go into the uh, the app registrations here. This is the client. If you go into permissions. I'm going to revoke this guy. So look, I'm going to go and say revoke admin consent from this guy. So now that I revoke the admin consent and I go back to Postman and I go here and generate a new token, watch what happens. If I go and pick up this token and go and try to hit that endpoint like this and click send. Uh, it's it's okay with it. Hold on a second. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it didn't propagate yet. It takes a second. Like it doesn't just pull it away at once. Let's try this again. Interesting. Let's go back here and just make sure that we did things right. Oh, I revoked the user delegated permission. I revoked the wrong one. Okay, revoke admin consent from the application permission. Yeah, that's my bad. Okay. Okay, so now can I go and generate a new token? Here's a new token here. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to go post this right here. Paste. Uh, do I need to wait on it a second? Just generating a bunch of tokens until it actually propagates. Because it's not instantaneous. And I'm going to also tell you about a concern that I noticed. But not just yet. I need to get this to kind of say, no, I'm not. I'm not consented anymore. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we are not consented on the APC app client. And the client ID is 20 something. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Generate token again. And then go hit that API endpoint. There you go, unauthorized. It takes a second. It takes a second to, to happen, but eventually it gets there. Right? What's the concern about this? You can't terminate a token that has been generated instantaneously. And there might be a way around this. I there might be a way around this. I honestly don't know. But, you know, all in all, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, there might be a capability where, you know, you can actually, you know, kind of confirm something like that or get something like that.
to happen. I, I don't know. I don't remember. But, you know, this is basically the, the gist of it. Like a very simple, quick API. You're creating a communication between two different APIs. You know, we basically went and said, I want to be able to have a simple client, like an offline client, a, a worker. People call it demon. I call it angel because it does good things for you. Can you have this worker kind of hit an API and kind of consume its resources after generating a token? You can now control this. Like you can have multiple apps and each one of these apps could have one or many permissions and you could go into your uh, core API in here and you can totally control like a bunch of roles. Like you can go in here and say students write all and stuff like that, right? And it will, and it will work just fine because it basically you know, knows I need to allow anybody in this role that has an authorization token, you know, to go through this system and kind of be able to consume that endpoint. Um, there is a little bit more into security. Like this series, I'm just trying to kind of give you a hint or a jest of what the world looks like. But eventually, at some point in time, we're going to have to kind of dissect this and break it apart and make it standard compliant, right? Uh, push all of this. Uh, authentication authorization probably in a broker you know have services kind of do their own kind of security there's a lot of things that we're going to need to do there to kind of get this you know ball rolling and kind of hopefully allow people to you know kind of see what it's like to secure an api in the next session though um i'm going to show you how you can have an endpoint like the same endpoint but it allows both a user to authenticate and an app to authenticate so that's not just not an application. We did the first video. We did a a user logging in and trying to access an API through an a a, a Blazor application. Okay, so that's a user generated token. And today we did the application generated token. Next time we're gonna do both. I want both to sit on top of each other, on the same endpoint, and see if we can make this happen. Um, uh, thank you so much for watching this. You know this is. Uh, this is a great opportunity to kind of share with you some of the uh, things that engineers would need on a daily basis to kind of secure their APIs. Uh, there's, of course, there's a lot more to it. Like Act Azure Active Directory has policies and groups and what you can control. And, you know, you're allowing the administrator to control uh, users based on their roles. It's really, really fun. And it's really, really uh, interesting. What I'm trying to do, actually, though, with these videos is to simplify this, just to make this a little bit more simpler for you so you can understand how the world works and how you can secure your APIs and all that kind of good stuff. I hope you find this useful. And as usual, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, uh, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. And I'll see you in another video. I hope you enjoyed this series. Take care. Have a good day.